Hey everybody, it's Greg Luther, and I'm here with uh, marketing legend, Mr. Frank Kern. How are you, Frank? I'm great. Good. I have made it to legend status now. That's Your legend something. status, man. Everybody yeah. knows Frank. In Very my good. Own mind, at least, yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, distractions that real estate agents deal with. I think. The two biggest problems for real estate agents is distraction and procrastination. Mm -hmm. And of course, the distractions that you do get allow you to procrastinate a little more, do what you should do. Mm -hmm. uh, and many times we're own, uh, we are our own worst enemy. So what are your thoughts on that? I know you coach a lot of business owners and small business owners like real estate agents. Um, tell me a little bit about distractions and what they can do to get focused on the one thing that works and that type of thing. Uh, well, if you understand what the one thing that works is, and in, in your case, it's going to be two, it's going to be one or both of two things. If you understand all that is, and it, then it just becomes a conscious effort and decision to only do those two things. And so from a, a real estate perspective, you got really two things you can do, list houses or sell houses, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's kind of it. You're either yeah. the listing agent and then you get the sale, you actually sell it, or you're the buyer's agent. So it's not really that complicated. I think what happens is a lot of the stuff that that supports the listing of or the selling of houses kind of sucks. Yeah. You know, like calling people and making the appointments and asking for the appointments. So then it doesn't become a, ma a matter of, oh, I got all these other things to do. It becomes a matter of your brain says, I want to avoid the pain of this stuff that I don't like to do. Calling so then, leads or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. So then I'll, I'll create other things to do that satiate the feeling of accomplishment, yeah. but doesn't actually get you the result. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the question should be now like, okay, how do I go, if I understand that this is the truth, that I'm in the business of listing houses, selling houses, or both, and that there are things that I don't want to do, such as calling leads or whatever, the question really should start to focus on well, how do I extricate myself from doing that? Okay. How do I make leads call me or whatever? Which is really an area of what you do. Yeah. What yeah. you help people with? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that um, you know if if we don't want to make the lead calls or we don't know what to say in making those calls, uh, what we'll do is is check our email and then check our email and check our email again and hit refresh a million times. Uh, go to Facebook. Go over, <clears throat> over to YouTube and maybe check out a couple of videos or feel like I'm learning something because it gives the illusion of movement in your business. Yeah. And as I've always said, you know, at the end of the day, if you did not get a signature on a piece of paper, you did not get paid today. So uh, they signed a listing agreement or they signed a buyer agreement. Everything else is the illusion of movement. I feel like I learned something or I got on a webinar today or I downloaded a PDF report and there's no shortage of emails going to real estate agents. We get 300 a day. That so it's delightful. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the distractions definitely get in the way. Um, so um, what are some of the things that you usually recommend on how do you get focused in on the those two things you should be doing and delegate the things that need done that you don't want to do. Um, what's your recommendations there? I mean, how can someone really get their mind right? It's a, well, it's, it's a twofold choice. Number one, you can just accept it and be like, okay, I need to make this call. And then your brain's going to say, oh, that means I got to spend all day calling leads. But then if you look back historically, say, actually, it takes me, I'm, I'm able to convert one out of 10 leads. Mm -hmm. And then that really, if you get that actual metric, then it's like, oh, okay, then I need to make 10 phone calls. Yeah. And th that, now that becomes less horrible. So that's method number one is like, well, find out the real truth of like, right. what it really means to call leads. If it's just making 10 phone calls, like, dude, just make the 10 calls. Yeah. You know, it's not going to suck. It's not going to be that fun. Yeah. It's only going to be unpleasant for a little while. It's like exercise. Yeah. You know, you don't have to exercise all day. If you get in 30 minutes or 45 minutes a day, you're like in the one half of 1% of the human race world, yeah. at least in Western society. So that's method number one. Method number two is, okay, let's say you just don't want to do the stuff that sucks. Then you've got a couple of choices. Number one is to delegate and learn how to do that. Or the other choice is to learn how to make that problem go away. So in, in my business, and I know you do a lot of this as well, I don't like reaching out to leads. I don't mm -hmm. want to ever try to sell anybody anything. I yeah. want someone to come to me and say, will you please take me as a client? So then your focus needs to be, how do I engineer a system like that? Yeah. So those are really your only three ways to do it. Yeah, and that's one thing we always teach, you know, with our inner circle members, it's it's what I call reverse prospecting. How do you get a client to contact you? Yeah. So if you've got a good offer that they're actually interested in, other than if you're buying a house, I'll represent you and I'll unlock the doors, or if you're selling a house, I can put my sign in the yard. Do you really have an offer for them? And if the offer's good enough, they're going to bend an ear and they're going to say, wait a minute, how do you do that? Let, let me call this guy or let me email this guy to get some details. So that reverse prospecting gets rid of the pain of 
calling your leads or feeling like you're bothering them or that type of thing. And then the second option, uh, as you said, is what if we delegate? So those that don't like making calls, maybe it's time to actually get a team. Uh, you know, as a real estate agent, you're wearing 15 different hats. You're the marketer, the transaction coordinator, the home shower, the guy that lists it on Zillow and, and on, on MLS. So maybe you need to hire somebody to help you out um, so that what needs to be done, the leads that need to be called or conversion or, or text messages or emails we need to do to get them converted to meet with you, somebody is responsible to do that so it actually happens. So yeah. you can get rid of the things you don't want to do. I sure wish I could pay somebody to exercise for me. Right. Hey. That Whoever <laughs> figures that out is going to be the yeah. richest person ever. Yeah, because yeah. it, it, it makes sense if I just exercise 30 minutes a day, but I've got three hours of procrastination of why I can't do it for 30 minutes. Yeah. And that's what we do as real estate agents is we'll get the illusion of movement. Well, well, let me check my emails real quick or let me jump on this webinar or this Facebook page and then I'll do it and we never get to it. So, yeah. you know, that's you start to, start to feel a little more guilty about it and, and we all realize we're our own worst enemies. The minute you realize you're doing it though, you have a choice. I could just stop doing that, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. then the, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of freedom in math, right? So you, know, you mostly like to work with people who are in the upper tier of production in real estate. And so uh, someone like that, you know, and I would assume that's who's watching this, look, you know that of all your, your deals historically you've ever done, there's going to be this type of home or this type of buyer that's going to represent the biggest paycheck for you. A huge way to get out of the world of procrastination and get out of the world that's, uh, that sucks is to only deal with those types of people, right? So in like my business, I coach a lot of businesses and I have a choice. I used to work with a lot of startups, a lot of beginners, it was horrible. Yeah, I hated it. I'd have to go through so many clients and so many phone right. calls and now I only work with seven figure companies and they're in seven like the, you know, the starting point. And it's a much better use of time. And when I talk to one of those prospects, mm -hmm. if I've engineered a system where they're coming to me, like think about this, you now engineer a system where you're reverse prospecting to the perfect person it, like all the stuff that's bad no longer becomes bad and your numbers get a little smaller because each transaction is bigger. So yeah. you don't have to talk to as many leads. You don't have to do as many listing presentations. And right. each, each transaction is so much bigger that it becomes bigger payday for less work. It's almost like more money for less work, which I think is what everybody wants. And Absolutely. I'm saying it kind of jokingly, but in this case, it's really true. It, it is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I teach a lot of real estate agents that, that want to get into the luxury market. And they say, hey, if I could close one luxury deal every 60 days, I only need one closing every 60 days to be rich, to truly be extremely wealthy, well into the six-figure income from closing six luxury deals a year. If you can't you do know. that, get out of the game. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Seriously, it's like, yeah. you know, go back and do whatever you were doing because there's no reason not to. Yeah, the yes. houses are for sale. The buyers are there. Yeah, most of your competition is doing the same dumb procrastination stuff. So a whole lot of this game is just to know the real outcome right. and to stop doing dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, the the type of clients I like to work with. The agents that I coach are those that are kind of upper level thinkers. They think you know I don't want to work with low end clients anymore because the sellers can never afford to pay my commission. They don't have money to give me. Mm -hmm. So no matter how good I am, they can't afford a full commission. Whereas when you get into the luxury market that homeowner is willing to pay a premium. They pay eight grand for a purse, you know, so they're willing to pay a premium for who you are, what you do, the type of service you provide. If they have a choice of cheap or good, they go with good. Yeah. They don't have to choose cheap, so. They pay eight um, grand for another purse. Another like, purse. That's one of many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's who yeah. you want. Yeah, absolutely. So, great, well, great information. I appreciate it, sir. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you, friend. Take it easy, y'all. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you found it incredibly helpful. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click the subscribe link so you can get notice of new videos as we get them loaded. Additionally, you'll wanna check out the description of this video for some additional links that'll help you with growing your business.